The Indigo Disc just came out and I've been playing it for a little bit and I have some thoughts, some things to say about it to let you guys know if it's actually worth buying or not. So obviously this is the part 2 to the Teal Mask DLC that came out in about September, which obviously if you already have that DLC, you're gonna have this one because it's like a 2-in-1 you can't just buy one of the DLCs. You buy the DLC and then you get part one and part two of the Teal Mask and the Indigo Disc. And the Indigo Disc is awesome. I think it's a great DLC. I think it's probably better than the Teal Mask, in my opinion. It's really close, really close, but I definitely think it's better. Just because it kind of completes the story and I feel like there's a lot more to it. A lot more in depth, in my opinion. I think the best thing about this DLC part two is that it's more challenging. All the battles are more challenging. Um, like all the wild Pokemon you encounter are way higher level. It makes sense though because it's like very end game, right? To, to play this DLC, you have to beat the main Scarlet and Violet games. Then you also have to play through the whole Teal Mask DLC. And then you get to this DLC. So all the wild Pokemon are really high leveled. All the trainers are experienced trainers. They're more challenging. A lot of people are having actual difficulty with like the Elite Four and everything. Also, I'm still doing the giveaway for a $20 Nintendo eShop gift card when I hit 10,000 subs. We're so close, guys. All you have to do to enter that giveaway is subscribe to the channel, leave a like down below, and a comment. Stay tuned for future videos, and then when I hit 10k, I'll be announcing the giveaway winner, which might be pretty soon, but also could be in a few weeks. Who knows? Also, within this video, I'm going to try my best not to spoil anything, but Kieran's storyline is really cool. I, like I said, I haven't actually finished the DLC Part 2, but I've played enough to say that his storyline is really cool. I think his character arc is pretty neat and interesting. I'm not going to say more than that. I'm just going to say it's interesting. Something else that I really like within the DLC is the introduction to these quests. So we have different quests that you can get different points for. And with these points, you could buy things. Like, I'm pretty sure with the points, you could use those points to go unlock different starter Pokemon. Because we have all the starter Pokemon from every single generation, which is just so cool. So you can shiny hunt your favorite Pokemon. Because they're not shiny locked, but unfortunately... The legendary Pokemon, I believe, are shiny locked. I'm like 99.9% .9 sure that all the legendary Pokemon are shiny locked. Like all the returning legendaries, which is unfortunate. Doesn't really make sense why they would actually be shiny locked because they don't really have anything to do with the storyline. They're just kind of like a fun bonus. So that stinks, but it's all right because we got the starters to shiny hunt. And the quests just kind of give you more of an incentive to actually go out and explore the world. And within the world, while you're exploring, I think everyone's going to quickly find out that this map, the Blueberry Academy map area, is really cool. It's really diverse, and it feels so alive. There are so many different colors, so many Pokemon, there's a lot of people around. I think the map just feels great. It feels more alive than Kitakami. Kitakami felt really alive in some areas, but some spots just felt really barren and empty. Kitakami is great. But this map feels really, really good. I think the whole just storyline and the whole idea of the Blueberry Academy, like how it's underwater, but it's like all these like 3D rendered blocks and cubes. It's just really interesting. I think it's really cool. And I think it really adds to the aesthetic, like all those colorful blocks. I think it really adds to the map. I really like how there's four different sections uh, or different biomes, I guess I should say. Like there's the ice biome. There's like the grassland biome. There's the beachy tropical biome and then something else oh yeah like the cliffs and like the mountains and rocks and stuff like that it's really cool and obviously we have more storyline more gameplay so we have an in-depth storyline here i think the kieran situation is my favorite so far within the storyline i'm not gonna say anything but i think everyone's gonna really like kieran's storyline i don't know what what's up with the the peach pokemon though i haven't gotten that far into the game yet so i guess we'll see what's up with him it's just so neat that it's actually like a challenging DLC. With all of the Elite Four, to defeat them, you have to do like a trial for them. Like they have a trial for you to complete. And then after you complete that trial, then you can battle them, the Elite Four. To defeat one of the Elite Four members, you have to have a whole team of new Pokemon to you that you have caught within the Indigo Disc. And you have to defeat him with those Pokemon. So like I can't use my team from the regular Scarlet and Violet game. So go out and catch some new Pokemon, which I'm trying to shiny hunt some Pokemon right now for that battle. I haven't done that yet. I really want to get a shiny Duraludon so I can get the Archaludon, but that's besides the point. So we have more of an incentive to explore, and I really like that within this DLC. I think that's so important to go out and explore the map and see what the new what the new DLC has to offer. 
I personally think this is definitely worth playing, and if you don't have the DLC at all, I definitely would recommend picking it up. It's like 35 bucks. It's not too bad. I mean, it's a little expensive, but I don't think it's going to break the bank. So I recommend go picking it up. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.